But we did see the church uh, last year uh, during the elections actively participate as compared to other elections. And um, there was a statement made by Jackson Olesapit that uh, yesterday, and remember, he's the man who actually prayed uh, at the bombers of Kenya. And now he's telling the government, specifically President William Ruto, that you know what, just be realistic to Kenyans and that statement has really elicited uh, mixed reactions uh, from Kenyans. Let's hear what um, first the government officials are saying regarding that statement. Okay, um, good morning Purity. So you know they say a day in politics <laughs> is very long. Yeah. So exactly a year ago, a time like this, um, UDA supporters and all the politicians in UDA were actually praising Jackson Olesa Pitt. And as in you were all against him at the time. Now today, it turns out that the, sh the tables have turned. So it's actually the UDA people now who are going after Olesa Pitt, saying he's now pro Azimio um, yeah. in terms of politics. So in a few days ago, he actually made very skeptical remarks, if I must say. He did say that it's time for the government to relook mm -hmm. at the promises it made during the um, election period. And he actually, he actually said, uh, yes, we made the promises, but from where we are, these things are unattainable. Mm -hmm. So we actually need to just come down, tell people we, we, are, we cannot be able to achieve all this that we promised you. We have to relook it and then work on the timelines. This is what we can deliver this year. This is what we can deliver next year. By the end of this term, we want to have accomplished this. Then, uh, in our next term, we are planning to do one, two, three, four. So, actually, that was his entire message. And our majority leader, the National Assembly, Kimani Chungo, was not so happy with mm. his sentiments. And he actually went after him, telling him to look at the reality and speak of, of the reality on what is actually, the, actually going, happening on the ground. So we don't really know how this will go, but it, it, it's a banter that it's, it's about to continue. But what is really interesting is that the Kenya Kwanza government came into office um, with a lot of support from the church. You remember during the campaign period, you had President William Ruto actually going to churches. Every Sunday mm -hmm. he was at a church. And when right. he stopped at a church, that meant donation for the church. Yeah. So the church really came in handy and really supported him during this uh, 2022 general elections. So it's very interesting to see that now there are some voices that are coming up that are actually now coming out of them supporting um withdrawing their support should i say withdrawing or actually they're just changing their tune um from supporting the president to telling him look things are not okay there's actually a video going around of uh, pastor Nganga. you know mm. in as much as he's very controversial yeah we must all agree the guy has influence online yeah so he was actually telling them you're here you're taxing us you're increasing prices of everything the lively uh, the, the cost of living is really going up so what do you want this is too much and if i speak you'll come and close my church you know he mm. was just he didn't mention anyone, um, that's very important to note, but he really spoke, he, he was actually speaking on behalf of the common monanchi yeah. in terms of the taxes, um, the fuel prices, cost of food, and all that. So he actually came out very strongly, not mentioning name, and his very names, and his, he was very actually careful mm -hmm. on how he was putting out his message. So what's really coming out is that, is it uh, that the church is tired? Because I'm also seeing memes online, people asking themselves, mm -hmm. what has um, the president or the president-led coalition or political faction done to the church that now makes them now speak against his um whatever he says they are they are like opposing it but all in all what stands out is the taxes and this is something the president promised i don't know why we, we keep on forgetting this he promised he wants to increase the tax base so that meant us paying more taxes and we really voted so i, I don't know but mm -hmm. the banter that's coming out is now the, the different political differences between the church which was a a main main supporter of um, Kenya Kwanzaa during during the campaign period, right. and and the Kenya Kwanzaa now politicians the, there's a difference, and now we'll see how this will shape up um, as of course as the week progresses. Mm -hmm. That's right, and yeah. um, we cannot forget that uh, during last year's elections, of course, the church had a lot of influence um, in the outcome of the elections because we have voters in churches, and sure. so what the leaders, um, religious leaders, say become uh, very very important. Let's now shift our focus to the march is it do i use the word anticipated because it's october and the kenya meteorological department had um, predicted that um, beginning this month as early as this week or latest next week mm. then kenya might experience uh, el nino rains and um, i know um winfrey 
you are very young or you are not born in 1997 when the country experienced the worst uh, flooding as a result of the El Nino. But I'm sure you've read about it and you know um, how lives were lost. And um, let's talk about what experts are saying in regard to the kind of preparedness uh, that we are uh, putting in place as a country. Yeah, well, definitely. The last El Nino that's being spoken about, I've only read it in books. Yeah. I, I, I was too, too little to comprehend yeah. what was going on at the time. So actually, Purity, the prediction was made by the weatherman a few months ago that we should be expecting El Nino rains during this period. This is normally, um, traditionally, in Kenya, October is the period for short rains. So he said let's, we, are, we should brace ourselves for more rain now. Uh, normally, El Nino is it's, it's a, a period of very heavy rains and it comes with destruction, floods and all that, all, all those um, disasters that come with a lot of rain. So what, what is really standing out for me is that this, this, this season now, it's coming at a time where there's a lot of uncertainties because we also have climate change issues. Mm -hmm. We don't know how, how it will be, we don't know the impact and, and you see this is something that like we have a lot of climate issues going on around us so when we speak about el nino it's a lot of us uncertainties there so um we actually see the government is has made a plan of 10 billion we don't know if they have the 10 billion but they are planning to use 10 billion to make sure that um they they are they are um how do you call them this response to disaster team is, is, is on standby we have uh, good shelters for people who might be displaced as a result of that and they are actually paying attention to um, um, informal settlement areas in the cities and towns across the country and also the arid and semi-arid lands in the country because when you speak about the arid and semi-arid lands this is where we find most of our uh, seasonal rivers and lakes yeah. and water bodies so when there is rain there's likely there's a very, it is highly likely that these water bodies will, will rise and then also speak about the rift lakes which have also been um, swelling in the, in the last four or five years. So basically it's, it's, it's mad with a lot of uncertainties and we don't really know what it, what it will bring. It might, um, maybe the predictions might come true or maybe the rains might not be there. So far we've had very uh, little showers here and there in different parts of the country. And it's also very interesting to see that, you know, normally we complain about our drainage systems, especially in Nairobi. Mm. I don't know how the government has planned to address this because yesterday we were actually working on a story in, of people in Larry constituency. Um, on Saturday there were rains and yesterday the, the, the drainage systems were actually closed blocked so the the now the residents had to come out and like and block the drainage system to make sure there's good passage of water and they're actually, they were actually arguing that this is their way of just making sure they are prepared for the el nino rains mm. so this is something that uh, definitely it's mad with a lot of uncertainties and stories that come from now the past in 1996 uh, 1997 when this happened it was it was chaotic there were yeah. destruction there was floods uh, people lost their property people lost Lives, lives some people yeah. and so we don't really know what will happen but we're just waiting to see of course the government will be actually updating us on uh, updating us on the progress mm -hmm. as well as um if there are any casualties reported or anything of the sort but we we just keep tabs with the weatherman and the government yeah, purity of course and uh, with the past experience of course we don't really expect to have uh, casualties because the weatherman did give the prediction and so there need to be some sort of uh, preparations but to know what the government is doing and whether enough has been done as we anticipate for these rains at um, the on the news center we shall also be having that conversation uh, with an official from the Kenya Red Cross to tell us where the government is in terms of preparedness. Thank you so much, Winfrey.